Hi, this is Querying Anarchy, and this is Marcus Pulish. As you can see, we have Chad and Nico tonight. Uh, uh, oh. Something unusual for now, <laughs> because we've been doing an awful lot of interviews of mm. different movers and shakers in the uh, freedom movement, and uh, tonight we're not, and I'm actually quite happy about that. Uh, tonight we're yeah, going to fuck those in. people. Yeah, no, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but tonight. Uh, they started off into, right. You're right. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> get that get that shit just shut down right out of the gate. No, I'm just fucking. But um, no, we, we, tonight we're going to dive into more important subjects. We're gonna talk about spirituality. We're gonna talk about our beliefs, um, and and we're probably gonna touch on because there's an awful lot of shit going on in the world right now. We'll touch on some other stuff. Lots of exciting things going on in our world. Uh, we've, we've been busy, we've been uh, promoting and doing those sorts of things. So we'll get into all of that as the night progresses. I think that the first thing I do want to mention is that we now have a Patreon. And I suggest you go to the Patreon, which the links will be down below. I demand that you go to the Patreon and, uh, <laughs> right. and subscribe at, 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 least, and at, at least one it. level. Help, help, help these, uh, help these, these gentlemen out to keep help bringing a you brother fire out. content. Yeah, right. Nico Stress needs a new laptop. Change. Yeah, um, come on, help. Marcus help me needs out. a new you camera. There's all kind of shit, you know. <laughs> but, Hell, Nico, Nico might need a new camera too. We don't know yet because we still can't see him. Um, hey, you know what? You know what? <laughs> you know what? I'll say this. Camera steals the soul. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, nah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, but uh, look, I want to. I want to say this, um, Marcus, because I, I, I don't. I think uh, I think you're kind of just kind of glossing over this. Uh, Marcus and and Michael um, both have been working their asses off this last grinding and a half, two for, weeks. For yeah. those for those that don't know, Michael is our tech god. He he does a lot of the the that kind of stuff. He built our yeah. He built our website, which you should go check out, AquarianAnarchy.com. He does and some of the best copying and pasting in the business. That's all. <laughs> no, I'm just checking it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an inside joke there that nobody else will get. <laughs> Michael Michael should get a chuckle out of. But no, the dude's a boss. Um, okay. he's uh he's really. I mean, it just like it was like just be like hey what about if we do this boom it's on the site boom that's it and so uh very soon you will be uh you'll be seeing that but for now at least you can go and the links are going to be in the um in the description here to to go to the but i just wanted to i wanted to give you and, and michael the credit that you deserve for the the tireless effort that you've put in because there was some stuff that you had put on my plate and then you took it off my plate and you ate it um I was like, damn, man, I was going to do that. You didn't have to, you didn't have to do everything. So uh, anyway, shouts to y'all for, uh, for getting, getting the job done because it, it's looking awesome. I'm, I'm like, big shouts, big shouts. Yeah. They yeah, were, uh, then, yeah, for sure. And I, and I get that. And, and, and also we now have, we are officially a real podcast <laughs> on like five different platforms right. and thank you anchor. Uh, but uh, got that done too. But Chad, when it comes to, to, pulling, you know, pulling stuff back onto my plate, I realized you were dealing with family mm -hmm. and that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. We talk an awful lot about, about politics and, and the state and all that crap. And the reason we fight, the reason that we, we do the things that we do is for family. That's mm -hmm. the important shit. This is just fun. You know, maybe someday through Patreon or through whatever, somebody buying our shit or whatever it is, we'll, we'll make a pretty good living at doing Aquarian Anarchy. That, I, I hope for that. We're going to be rich, biatch. That's right. We're, like you said, we're going to be heirs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, the important shit is spending time with your family and, right. and figuring out what you believe and how you believe and what your existence is all about. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So to dive in to the, the subject of spirituality, I, I think that one of the things that I, that makes all of us different, a little different than your average, uh, you know, spiritual person is that none of us really, even Chad, who has a more traditional 
uh, spirituality. Um, he's Catholic, but um, but none of us see God as like this overarching state. For mm -hmm. each of us, God and spirituality is more of a, a, a you know, to, to for lack of a better word, a, a broad term and a, you know, it isn't a centralized, it's decentralized. You know, I call what I do, and for those of you who have paid attention to our channel for a while and know my spirituality, I practice what I call voluntary voodoo, which is a, a based in Afro-Caribbean religion. And to be clear, that particular bit of spirituality tends to be pretty decentralized anyway. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, but all of us just don't, you know, I don't think the, the, idea of this overarching powerful authoritarian god works for any of us mm -hmm. and why would it <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that doesn't make any damn sense to me why would god who's all powerful and all knowing need to be put the hammer down <laughs> you know that doesn't make any sense well so so like the, the what comes down to for me and this is and it's interesting because like my uh my little brother <laughs> um he he's he got into this this stuff with like sexuality and spirituality and stuff like that back you know i don't know over a decade ago um and it's it's interesting because when you think about it from the standpoint of um force versus freedom if you if you think about love is it love if there's a gun to your head that says love me or else <laughs> right no it's just yeah. self-preservation at that it's point tough right love it's tough love <laughs> come on now it's tough love right here right. <laughs> take but, your no. love and you'll like it <laughs> right 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 but, but so so even with even even as it relates to god like and you know gr growing up catholic and i i can go through this stuff and this is not like now this may be incongruent with what some catholics think a lot of catholics think but this is not incongruent with what I, I have understood as like bedrock Catholicism is free will. And you have the choice to either choose to love God and to, to move towards him, unite with him um, in a way that, that um, leaves some attachments behind that, that keep you from him. Um, not in the sense of say I, one of the things that I think is incongruent, even with like some of the stuff, like if you start looking at it and there's some inconsistencies with how some of this stuff is interpreted, the idea that God is sitting on a, th a throne and saying like, you get the fuck out of here. You, ah, you said enough right things and, you know, bowed and, you know, it's kind of like that thing from Holy Grail. It's like, you know, uh, I'm not worthy, you know, all these things. It's like, it's like, it's like every time I try to talk to someone, it's sorry this and forgive me that and I'm not worthy. There's, there's certain things that are, that are like that, that indicate a certain uh, level of reverence or something like that. But it's, that's more for like you and for your own like um, personal uh, disposition, I guess, so to speak, than it is for like God's like, if you don't do these things and check these boxes on this list, you're going into the fire, bitch. You know, that's, that's right. not really, that's not love. That is just tyranny. And that I think is very incongruent with what, if you actually think about the concept of free will and what happened. And one of the things that my brother and I were talking about this, we stayed up really, really late. He came in uh, back in July, came in for a couple of weeks and, you know, he was like, he's like, no. So if like you go back to like the garden of Eden, the, he's like, check this out. He's like, God didn't exile Adam and Eve from Eden. It's like they exiled God. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, so it's yeah. it's a different different kind of uh, way to take things, and and that's where sure. that's kind of where I found myself, and 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 have kind of rested in this is that it's less about God rejecting us and more about us rejecting God, and that's yeah. that's Thanks. where that's where we get really uh, into trouble. I think. Yeah, and and the thing is, like, in in a lot, I have a lot of. Uh, couple things when talking about uh sex and god i, I need to <laughs> yeah I, well i need to be clear oh, I, boy I, marcus you've been on a roll i know i know you've but, been on a roll 
but but I uh, me personally, I'm I'm you can't you can't not I'm not active anymore, but I need to I need to be honest and Amber, I, get on it, man. I know. Oh, that's not what you meant. Yeah, no, I need to be honest. I mean, I I'm a member of a fraternal order called the Ordo Templi Orientis or the OTO that in essence is sex magic. That is something that that I've done in the past. So section for me, the chili peppers back blood sugar, baby. Right. That's right. Sex but, magic. Yeah. It's good stuff. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, hey, man, <laughs> well, I, oh, to me, shit, sex, okay. sex and, and, and spirituality and God, I mean, you are, you are trying to unite with God. What better yeah, you tapping into God. that. That's yeah. like the closest thing. Go ahead. I'm up at, no, no, go ahead, man. That, that uh, yeah, God. Uh, that's that's the that is the closest thing to God if you think about it, which nobody really thinks about it. They just think about it for like, oh, it's um, it's this like, oh, we, it's feeling. But in actuality, um, sex is the ultimate creation. Creation is life. Life is God, and therefore, right. like, therefore, um, in my train of thought and how I perceive things, God is woman, or woman is closest thing to God aside from man, men. Uh, you know, in the womb, start out as girls in the first place, and then they develop as men. So it's like, either way we go around this, um, I believe that women, um, when you're in those positions of having sex or getting close to creation, that is the closest step to God, other than like cheating and taking psychedelics and other things along that nature. Mm -hmm. Right, for sure. And, 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 you know, especially, I mean, have you ever had sex on weed? I mean, <laughs> when you alter your perceptions and yeah. and have sex, I mean, you really get to those, those areas, that, that exact, that moment and you lose the, the, you know, when, like for instance, I've, I've done my share of psychedelics as well. And when, when you're immersed in the, the, like I, I'm thinking of a time when, when I was doing mushrooms with my wife and we just lost ourselves in the act. That is in my mind and in, in my, my crazy, you know, way of viewing things. That is that moment of union of mystica or union with God that, that everyone that has any kind of spiritual bent is looking for, whether you call yourself a Muslim, a, a, a Hindu, a Christian, a pagan, whatever it is, you're looking for that union with God. Mm -hmm. And when, when I think Chad, you hit it on the, the head when you talked about that it is an absence in, 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 in paradise lost, there's hints of that uh, when you look at it, because when Satan falls from from the presence of God, it isn't that you know it's this awful bad place, you know, with fire and brimstone that comes in the Middle Ages and is is largely based, frankly, on pagan symbolism. But but it is that absence from God. It, it, what hell is, um, is is a state of being that is outside of the, the, the glow and, and existence of God, you know, and Kabbalistically, the, the mystical Jewish tradition, um, there, there's this, this thing called the shells, and there's this, this understanding that hell, if you will, or the, the place of the damned, is, is a failed tree of life or, or, mm. you know, in, in that system, you, you climb to God and, and, at a particular point, I don't want to get into the, the depth of it, but when you lose that, you fall into the shards or the, what's called the Kalipoth or the cliff mm -hmm. So really what hell is, or is an absence of God. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, hell is, um, there's like so many viewpoints you can like go on like the different areas of hell, um, like the seven layers of uh, or seven levels of hell, or, um, you know, that just one big old cold place or one big old hot place. There's so many descriptions, but um, hell is legit on earth. If you um, don't have any kind of like motivation, like, let me tell you, um, when a minute goes by and you know you're in trouble, eternity can go by and 
it could just rip you apart. The stress, that's another form of hell. Like it deteriorates your body from um, a uh, different points. Um, and it just rips apart your mind. Um, living in your brain um, or living in your head instead of in the present is another form of hell because you, 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 you're here to live a uh, physical life. And when you get to yourself and you beat yourself up, that's why you have to defeat doubt I'm not gonna lie, I've been like really, really on like, I've been getting on myself. I've been like really beating myself up lately. And uh, for the past couple of days, I've just been like sitting down thinking to myself like, this, this shit sucks. <laughs> like, but like, I can have a smile on my face without yeah, a problem. Yeah. But sitting down and like letting all the things tax up on me, that shit tell. So, um, you know, the first thing you have to defeat in your day is the possibility that you fall into hell. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I, I, I'm dealing with very similar issues myself. You know, um, for those that you don't know, that don't know, I lost my day job and I'm having a hell of a time getting a new one. And I blame myself for the situation. And so you're right, Nico. Um, the, 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 the hard part is not doing that and remembering and, and I have a wonderful life. I mean, my, my wife and kids are great. I mean, I have fantastic friends. I mean, just the, the people that, that I'm here with are wonderful, amazing people. And, and I have gotten in my life to be able to do things, but I still tear myself down. And there's a quote by Alistair Crowley out of the, the uh, book of the law that I like that that I have that I use to remind myself that 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 when I start tearing myself down or I start you know falling prey to the bullshit that all of us are really dealing with right now I think the coronavirus has really kicked a lot of that shit in mm -hmm. but the quote is um, existence is pure joy all the sorrows are but as shadows they pass and are done but mm -hmm. there is that which remains and that's hard to, to remember when you're in the yeah. moment of, of gloom and doom and crazy shit happening in your life and right. worrying about bills and all that bullshit to remember this is just an illusion. And the point we're here, whether or not there is a God or not, if you're an atheist, you're trying, if you believe that there is nothing more than this existence, well, you should be trying to make the best of this existence. Right. And that, Man, you know, it's, exactly. You know, I say that all the time. My um, my homie and I like uh, when this coronavirus first started off, and like panic was really beating our ass. And then like we we were like, oh no, oh no, like what's life going to be? And then I was like, wait a second, let's just stop stressing right now and <laughs> take two steps back, because at the end of the day, bro, we could have died last week and we are supposed to be doing something that we want to do. We can die tomorrow. So it's like, even though we set plans and we have all these expectations, live, live and be happy, be grateful for it. Um, sit up, be grateful for everything that you have because there's one slip away and you're at the loss of all body functions and you go mm -hmm. out of here, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, well, and to the, the other thing that's, um, so like, we're we're fortunate in that you know we've got our family and our friends and, and all that stuff but there a lot of a lot of what i think causes some of this some of that despair yeah the situational stuff can be it's it's easy to like kind of close in on yourself and i've always found like my my best remedy to that is like acts of service mm -hmm. um if i feel like i'm like the world's closing in on me if i feel like i'm being uh, attacked, you know, either financially or whatever else. Um, I, you, I throw myself into like, okay, let me see what, who can I help with something? What can I do to like, take a load off? And then you start to get out of yourself. And all of a sudden now you realize like, number one, I'm part of something bigger than myself. Number two, like I have value to someone else in this world whether whether people are see you know like in in your situation marcus you know whether people are are recognizing that enough to pay you what you know what you what you need to be able to do everything right now and all that stuff is is nothing but like like loneliness is is a really really 
um, big, big problem. And what I take it back to with our spirituality is we were made it, the, the way I have come to understand this. We were made for connection. We were made for ecstasy. We were made for like joy and happiness and like real, like ecstasy. And we were made for eternity. So if we think about it, you know, think about the things that, um, that really like animate like the human condition, right? It's connection or lack thereof. It's joy and ecstasy or lack thereof. And it's eternity or the finite nature of our human existence. Okay. So when something's, when we're enjoying something, we don't want it to end. Right. <laughs> you know, like, like we, you're like, man, what, and when it's over, like I, we went on vacation a couple of weeks ago, like I didn't want it to end. And then when it was over, it was like, God damn, man, I want to go back. <laughs> like I want to go back and like do that for like two, two, three more weeks. You know, um, you, you, it's a human tendency and, and it's cause it's, it's hardwired into us. Like, it's a right. It's a it. right. It's all right. We just right. are living a skewed life. Exactly. Exactly. We are made, we are made for eternity. We're made for connection and we're made for like bliss and ecstasy and, and joy. And it's all of the things that we do to ourselves that, that really kind of get in the way of that. And that's the thing that, um, that is really, that, that really causes like a lot of the depression and a lot of the issues. And so like back to the thing about, God and like this separation, this absence, um, versus like him punishing you or anything like that. Like, I know when I fuck up, I did uh -huh. it recently, you know, I said some shit I shouldn't have said, and um, I had to pay the price for it. And you know what? Like, I didn't get anything like, you know, you go sleep on the couch or you don't get to sleep here anymore or anything like that. I just got like this sort of cold you hurt me yeah distance and and energy and and it just like reminded me of like what i did to fuck up and how how uh how i felt about it and it and then it drove me kind of more into like sort of that like loneliness like oh gosh like how did i did i did I really like blow it for good? You know, that sort of thing. I mean, I, I, I knew, I knew better, but I still, I was like, you know, like you don't get too many get out of jail free cards. Um, and so I poured myself into like, all right, so like, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, yeah, it's one thing to apologize and to like, try to, you know, commit yourself <laughs> to do it differently, but you know, I also need to help my sister out. <laughs> I, need to, I need to, uh, I need to take care of some stuff around the house that, that needs taken care of and, and make, and, and it really like, it did a few things. It helped me kind of it like energized me in a different way and, and made me more, it makes me more patient, um, less likely to fly off the handle and do that kind of shit that I did to get myself in trouble. Um, but it also like, it kind of brings a different kind of vibe to the house. Right. Because now it's like, okay, so, we're not all going to go like in our little corners and do our own selfish things and just create this distance. We actually, um, we actually can, can, can see that we love each other. And, and that's what, that's, I think um, the, the biggest part of it is when we feel like we are like our, our sense of being loved is at risk or our value is at risk in for other for the people who are the most important to us or if we feel like we have failed in reminding them of how important they are to us that's where a lot of this connection and so then you take that to god and it's the same kind of thing like we we create these boxes that we imprison ourselves in with our loneliness and with our um feelings of we don't want to forgive ourselves we don't think we're worthy of being forgiven or whatever it is and so we we can Create, but then if you just come out of that and say, you know what? No, fuck this box. I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I, whatever it takes. I'm going to do whatever it takes to win you back. <laughs> you know, that's that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and when it comes from love, then the connection just kind of comes naturally. 
for sure. And God, the thing is, God is one hell of a patient in energy. Now, for me, I see God more feminine than I do masculine. To me, I, I truly believe that it is goddess. Mm. I have the mother God thing works really well for me. Uh, she's, but, but she a hoe. My, my mom's a hoe, you know, <laughs> because for me, it's Babylon and, and she's the great harlot who loves everyone no matter what. But right, so yeah, I, I know well, I'm weird. The, but it, but this is hey, going to be the most, hey, uh, hey, look. The most controversial spirituality episode in history. Look, look, look. God One thing I told my homies, and like this forever stuck with me, is that for you to even think about you thought of conceiving God, you have to think of the things that you didn't even think were conceivable. So you have to be uncomfortable with the thought of god being a crooked stranger that you would not even think in the mm -hmm. slightest term of being god mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah go ahead marcus love yeah, you for, for me the thing is i'm not kidding <laughs> to me the, the highest form of god is the great harlot to me she is she opens her cup which is between her legs to me to to accept my love she's just trying and to keep it warm I know, <laughs> so, but, but it is a relationship. Yeah. This is a relationship. And she is the most patient damn woman that could ever be. Very similar to my own wife, who has got to be patient. She doesn't have mm -hmm. shit. But same, patient. same here. Mine is uh, like, a, she's, she's, oh. she's, she's, sainthood is in her future. For sure. Right. I'm a piece of shit. And, uh, and anyway. Oh, whatever, mm -hmm. man. You're one of the coolest dudes I know. But, <laughs> but, I don't know. But I don't she might disagree. She, she, <laughs> she, she, has, she has threatened to expose me. So, uh, you know. Oh, <laughs> your wife out here trying to take your life, Chad. Uh, She's yeah, trying man. to drive. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. I, I deserve it, though. Like, I, I, I was, it was bad. I, anyway. yeah, we two dicks, man. Mm hmm. But, but no, you God. I'm going to take, take people for granted. That's the thing. It's like we, we, mm -hmm. uh, we just, we tend to do the worst shit to the people that are closest to us because we, we expect them to forgive we, them. Yeah, we expect them to forgive us, and we we like we're like, oh, you know, well, I got away with the last shit that I did, so you know, <laughs> you hadn't left, you hadn't left yet. Let's see. No, it's not. It's not that I'm saying. Let's see if this works. But it's it's almost right. like there's a a Dante uh, sort of <laughs> quality to it where it's like, oh, uh, and we're, yeah. we're we're also self destructive animals, right? Like we, yeah, man. we have a way of like just taking something awesome and was that the shit that I did? It was on vacation. We were on vacation. We we're supposed to be having fun and relaxing. And what it was, I let like my own like stress that I brought to the vacation, and I let the uh, the fact that we were only gone for like three days and it was just I knew it was short. It just kind of like I don't know. It was it was not Put very you in a sour mode. Yeah, but I was I was just not anyway. It was uh, could have been better. I could have been better, and I I didn't. Sure. that's all on me like i didn't approach it right you know i didn't have this the right energy going into it and uh <laughs> the right mindset that i'm you know i uh i gotta pray more that's the big thing like uh, you know, since we're in the spirituality episode i'm just gonna put that on myself i gotta uh, i gotta do a better job of getting in in contact with uh my spirit guide easiest thing bro is just meditate wake up in the morning mm -hmm. hit a prayer Yep. Get a quick prayer. That's all. That's one. Of, that's yep. one of the best things that I do. I mean, I um, I have to implement it a little bit more. But every day I wake up, or I need to do it before I go to sleep. But like, if I'm about to go drive, I you know bow my head real quick, say a little quick prayer, um, for you know protection, guidance, all that. You know, your boy's not trying to die out here. Uh, <laughs> not when my, not when uh, you know, I got a little. Hopefully, I got a little time on my clock. So you know, your boy, your boy is trying to make sure every destination his people are straight. You know, right? But um, I mean, it's a lot easier getting into that habit than um, than you trying to like, oh, let me pray. Like, right. if you if you like, right, right. just because you know, every time a plate served in front of you, throwing your hands together mm -hmm. and saying Amen at the end of it. So yeah, um, you know, when you got little things to hit you with triggers like oh yeah i can pray now type mm -hmm. so that's that's uh that's what i've most definitely used to help me stay on my um little prayer uh journey because i most definitely had stopped meditating for a while and um you know i was um i would say you know i was fine but you know sometimes um you need that moment of just silence and stuff to just like really gather thoughts instead of mm -hmm. 
act as if you're stressed. Um, yeah. Because all the noise around you adds to you not being able to think. You're not being able to think. Think you're already frustrated. In actuality, you have the pieces of the puzzle. You're just you're just agitated with your surroundings. Right. What was that thing that uh, that I said that um, when when we had Hotel Jesus on? Is it uh, this, this guy that you went to his uh, went to his like mentor or whatever? And he's like, "Hey, I." I I can't do my meditation today because they were supposed to meditate for an hour every day. He's like, I can't do mm-hmm. I have too much stuff. I have this. I have, he went through and he listed all the stuff that he had to do. He's like, I can't, I don't have, I don't have and the guy's like, man, you really do have a lot on your plate. You should meditate for two hours today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, man, I, I, I am uh, definitely neglecting myself in that regard because I, I'm like, what's the minimum I can do to just like say I did something, you know, and then I'll, uh, Five minutes, I'll go, then I'll Five go minutes. about my day just kind of cranking through. And, 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 and again, it goes back to like, I, I'm not saying that we can't as men and, and as, as humans be to a certain degree self-sufficient and like that we, you know, we have to, we have to take care of our shit, you know, like we can't just wait, sit around on our hands waiting for someone else to take care of it. That's not, that's not what this is about. This is about, mm-hmm. I think it was St. Augustine who said, you know, uh, pray as though everything depends on God and then work as if everything depends on you. For sure. And if we, if that's what we do, then we're now, I'm not, this, this is me saying right out front, like I'm not the uh, shining example of doing this properly. We're all flawed. It's something I'm telling myself right now. See, I'm taking my opportunity to to do this because then I can watch this later and I can remind myself, look, dumbass, you said you said you did <laughs> this shit. So get on it. Um, but no, but that's 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 the real man. It's like we 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 tend to spend so much time on like little menial shit that we think is going to because it makes us look busy, it makes us look productive, and really like just silence and listening. Yeah. And, and for me, you know, uh, a couple things, Chad. One, you, you have a huge tool in the Catholic Church with the saints and days and doing all that. For me, I, I really draw a lot of my personal beliefs from nature and a lot of my, my interaction is from nature. And um, because of my involvement with voodoo, I don't really have the you need to take a minute and pray thing going on mm. because every day. You know, one of the things that I get as a guide for me from my particular faith is that, you know, Monday's for leg bus. So I got to light a cigar. I got to light some candles. I got to do some shit. And it kind of makes you focus down on, on that. I'm not saying that, that, that voodoo or Catholicism or those kinds of religions are better than, than any other religion. You know, regular old Christian- um, it's It's kind of like, it to me, it's kind of like diets or like, exercise regimens mm-hmm. like you want to do krav maga you want to do crossfit like whatever like works for your body style and everything i i like we talked about way back when um uh, like before the summer i think um mm-hmm. so often we get caught up in this this like which religion is right and it's like i don't know like i, I i'm on, i'm to the point now where like i think that um there are some things that are really really important and then there are some things that are not very important that people want to like kill each other over. Yeah. Right. And I'm not about that shit. Like, I'm sorry. Like I, you know, you want to practice whatever you want to practice. And if it makes you not an asshole who wants to murder people, and if it makes you happy and makes you pointing yourself towards union with God, man, knock yourself out because I, I like, I think, I think that the, one of the greatest travesties in human history is the fact that we have literally like driven people away from God by trying to shove God down their throats in our way. Yeah. It, it's all about force and, and people repel from force. It, mm-hmm. and that's the exactly. way that it is. They're going to rebel. Like it, it, we all, we, we were all teenagers. We all know that like there was a point in time where like, it didn't matter what our parents told us to do. We were going to not do it or do the opposite. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. It's the, it's, it's uh, the, you know what it is? It's, um, 
And it's directly yeah, proportional is, to how forceful they are with their language. I think. It's anyway, forcefulness, but it also, um, how do I put it? Um, you, you get the, uh, the authority figure that um, was told this is how it's supposed to go. And so it's like an old repetitive cycle and how we're <laughs> right. supposed to be, how we're supposed to be brought up. So it's like, if you keep going down that certain cycle, you're not going to change up. You're not going to switch up on how, uh, how to go about it. So, I mean, if I have a parent that tells me how Catholicism works and then, you know, I go to school and I have a best friend and then, you know, out of all the years, senior year, we decide to start talking about religion and, you know, all of a sudden he's a Jewish. And I was like, Whoa, wait, your God's not my God. I can't like you no more. Like it doesn't make any sense on, um, how we like, like to com- be combative combative about it like it legit makes no sense <laughs> it makes zero sense on why people would um put religion um at, at, at right or at, that you, yeah. you feel you feel like threatened you know like it, it's sometimes there's that where it's like it's like oh wait your security has been threatened like somebody else believes something that i don't believe or somebody doesn't believe what i believe Oh my gosh, what, you know, is my stuff wrong? And so then that defensiveness, that like insecurity turns into defensiveness and becomes like a, it's, it's almost like you stop, you don't think, instead you just protect. And it's, if you don't got have it a now. foundation that leads you to like understand the why, because the why is the most important thing. If you're not, if the why, if the why isn't at the foundation of why of of what you're doing then the how and the what just become like it's it's just rote it's not really it's not really it's founded not really in religion. any reason and and then you, it makes you really really vulnerable to when someone comes with something else to now you're just like whimsical you're just like oh well let me go do this now let me go do and you don't really even have a foundation and then you get to the point where and i think that's where a lot of and i'm not saying i'm not throwing any shade on like atheists or anything like that but i think a lot of the time like a lot of people i've talked to talk to about that stuff there's like some pain somewhere where some someone someone was like either abusive or someone let them down they felt betrayed or whatever it is and and it and and it's kind of at, that's at the heart of it and i feel like it's a missed opportunity for people who believe in God <laughs> because we're like, man, you, if you believe in God and you want everyone and you think everyone should be united to God and believe in God, um, then you should probably be a better salesman and not be such an asshole that makes people reject the entire idea of God. Anyway, what were you going to say, Nico, before I went off on that little, uh, oh, no, no, you're good. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's clear as day now. Um, okay. We're coming for people's egos. You, you, mm. You're coming for people's. Um, you, 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 when Absolutely. I assume, assimilate or associate myself with a god, and like this is my being, this is my world, this is my everything, and you'd be like, <laughs> your god wears a robe, mine wears a colorful one. Like yours ain't shit. Like whoa, whoa, whoa. Like <laughs> <laughs> don't ever try to come for my. So like, it's you're attacking people's ego. You so it's easy to get defensive when you come for something um, where you have so much belief in. It's like telling a kid Santa Claus isn't real or anything else along the lines mm-hmm. of that. When you come for somebody's ego, their personality or what they believe in, you know, beliefs are uh, a strong thing to like really, really believe in. It's like all your thought, your soul and everything in is in that thought that you have. It carries feeling, emotion, everything. Right. Um, and somebody just tries to be like, yeah, no, it's not what you think it is. Mm-hmm. Then that's not fair. And then that's where the rebellion comes and all the right. other things. For sure. The, you know, and, to, and, and I use Crowley a lot because Crowley's a wise dude. Yeah, he, people are going to freak out and, because he's the beast 666 and all this right. craziness. But the motherfucker talked about a bunch of really cool shit. One of the things he said about the, these kinds of topics is he said, all religions are true, save that they know a little. And if you assume that that every religion, and I'm talking about every fucking religion, have just a little piece of whatever truth is, and you start putting those pieces together, you can uh, be, be, for yourself and figuring out what works for you, then you can pile that shit up together and have it and and have something 
that 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 really matters. Um, several years ago, um, again, I, I'm a freak, guys. Um, I called the Archangel uh, Tzadkiel um, in, in a process called evocation, where you call an angel, and or you can call a demon too. I don't I don't suggest that they're not potty trained. Oh no! What? Oops! Oh what? What? I hope I didn't stain my underwear. But. <laughs> <laughs> call, call I, don't, I don't care if they're potty trained or not. I ain't summoning no fucking demon. Right. Um, so, so you can call it. You can call it. I saw paranormal activity. Damn it! I'm uh, not yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I called Sopkiel, and um, the process is a really long process. But to make it short enough, um, part of the process is you had to get into a trance and go to the astral, which is like the the area right. past here and meet up with them. So I go to do that, you know, and I, and this is like, at this time, like my 15th evocation, I've, mm -hmm. I've done this a few times and I, and I called Sopkiel and I'm in my meditation and, I, and I've gone out and done the process to get to him. And there's a, the, and he's on the side of a beach in my meditation. And this is all in my head at this point. And, and I, I walked up to him and there was this beach and he was, standing there in white with a blue sash on him and he had you know um, had long brown hair really kind looking and um and he looked just like jesus to me hmm. and and so i said Wait, black or white jesus a white jesus just like he just looked like a picture of jesus in a white man's house nico right. on, you know? yeah yeah right he's a picture of jesus in a white man that's a good description which is actually <laughs> jupiter just as an aside which is which, which is by the way the 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 energy of sophiel sophiel is the archangel of jupiter so but anyhow what what i said to, you know first of all i was like all right here you are. I did my little testing because there's testing to make sure that they're the right person. And then you, you, you take them back to the temple so everybody else can enjoy them. So I was like, okay, let's go. And he's like, nah, let's chill for a minute. Let's talk. And he was very calm and very quiet, very Jesus-like. And so I was like, okay, you reminded me of Jesus. What's up with this? And he's, he looked at me and he said, I am Jesus. I, I, I'm whoever you need. Uh, you know, to a Hindu, I'm Krishna, um, who, by the way, is blue. And to to you, I'm Sathkiel. But I'm Jesus too. I'm. Hey, my, I have a I have a y'all need Jesus shirt that I could have I could have had for this. Is you need it, Jesus, man. The right. thing is, who who hates Jesus? I mean, who the hell is wow. out there? Like like saying this guy who taught peace. And taught people to to come together and give of themselves for the world. Who, who's the asshole that's like fuck Jesus? I mean, I heard Sean King doesn't like uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's not laughs> you know the the thing is, I agree with Crowley yet again. Who, when he said, and we've said, said this to each other before, but when he said Jesus may or may not have been a man, but he certainly was a god, and. Uh -huh. I think that is no more true of statement has ever been said. And why should, you know, I believe in a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. Why should I not get to play in Jesus land too? Mm -hmm. If he really is God and he really does love me and maybe I am fucked up and maybe I'm wrong, but wouldn't Jesus say, I love you anyway? Wouldn't Jesus say, okay, well, I'm going to go minister to the Gentiles. Wouldn't Jesus say, I'm going to accept you for who you are yeah. anyway? You well, know? and and so I have I have something I want to read. Um, but before before we do that, I wanna um I just wanna kind of wanna explore what you just said a little bit. Um so so let's think about this. Um conceptually, Jesus um like we Let's try to think of how, how I want to frame this. Um, so there's a God. God judges who's good and who's bad, who gets to go to heaven and who doesn't, right? It's according to some people, right? Okay, so um, what I'm told by some people is that, like, 
it doesn't matter what you do. All you have to do is believe in, in Jesus and that's it. You're, you're done. Like you check your card and like you could, and I'm like, well, all right. So like, what if I say like I'm saved and then like I go murder a bunch of people like, Oh, and then you weren't really saved. Uh, there's all kinds of different spinoffs onto that and everything. But anyway, so my contention has always been, okay, but like, I go back to this, like this concept of in, that in Catholicism of invincible ignorance where like, so let's say you're born, you know, somewhere that isn't even exposed to this stuff. You know, now it's getting increasingly difficult as the internet makes make stuff, but, but there's people in like Bangladesh and, you know, other places that were like, you know what I mean? Like they're not like, they're not exposed to uh, Christianity. They're not exposed to some people aren't even like exposed to the internet you know anyway my point is if you don't know then how can you be held responsible for believing in something that you've never even been exposed to it and then i will take that further to say even if you know and even if you've been exposed to it what if you haven't been exposed to it in the proper way that would actually help you to be receptive to it it's not your fault if the person who presented it to you yeah. is a dick, right. you know, and makes you feel like a piece of shit if you don't agree with them right off the bat right. or whatever the case may be. Like, there's a, there, one of the things that we're missing the most, you remember we talk, uh, so like, like connection, love, you know, we, we, we yearn for love and connection. Mm -hmm. We learn for eternity and we learn for, uh, crap, what was the other one <laughs> that's it connection love, connection eternity and um would it be uh uh inter um bliss love oh yeah um, ecstasy bliss yes ecstasy. Yeah. bingo good job nico thank you man yeah so if we're if, if we're if one of those things though is connection and love like isn't that like one of the things that's the most missing from all of this stuff is that the approach is not an approach of love the approach is more of an approach honestly coming from like insecurity to me insecurity breeds this um i'm right you're wrong and kind of say anything yes a condescending sort of tone of voice uh, an approach that says um listen dumbass you know you don't know you know what i mean and it's and i'm not saying I, i'm immune to this shit i'm an asshole sometimes like i that's what part of what you talked about earlier that got me in trouble um Sometimes I, you know, I'm, I'm strong willed. My wife and I are both very, very strong willed. And so it is equal parts, like the source of our fights and the source of like our like connection and, and like passion for each other because we see the real in each other and we don't pull any punches. <laughs> um, and so we really respect that in each other. But uh, so anyway, so that's, that, that was my thing. It's like this whole idea of like, um you I have something being... to add to that. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um this this is this is one of my favorite stories. My wife's gonna watch this later and she's gonna <laughs> laugh because I tell this all the damn time. This yeah. is one of my favorite stories, but it, it and it's based on on reality of what happened. Like when uh Christianity was spreading around the 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 world like wildfire, you know, a few hundred years ago. Um you know, like when they came into Germany, they they just took fucking Germany over. And you think of Germans as being these, you know, mm. but they just, you know, converted them by sword point across the board, you know, just really did it. Well, they, they got to India and in India, they had a bunch of trouble. Like they had a hell of a time uh, converting people from Hinduism, which is not a actual religion. It's, it's a, a bunch of different religions mm -hmm. that they, the British call it Hinduism. And when they took over, but anyway, they had they had trouble, and the reason is because they in Germany they have a Western mind and they think in Western ways, and in India they don't. So mm -hmm. what what basically happened was like you have the the Catholic priest at the time that comes into to a, in, into an Indian village and and says goes up to some guy and, and says you know knocks on his door, hey, uh, I'm gonna hear tell you about jesus and he's like okay cool who's this jesus dude and he's like well jesus is god and he's like oh okay then um, tell me about it and he's he's like okay um first of all he is the only god 
because he looks up back behind this guy and he's got like 10,000, literally, because there's 10,000 Hindu gods. There's 10,000 gods on a shelf. <laughs> and he's like, okay, first of all, he's the only god. All those other ones, they're <laughs> fake. And he's the only one. And there can't be any other ones. And he is the only one that is. And the guy looks at him and goes, okay, <laughs> I'm with that. Cool. Just one. Yeah, just one. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, cool. And he says, here's, here's your crucifix. You can go out and put that up on your shelf. That'd be the only one you need. He's like, gotcha. And so the guy leaves. So he comes back like two weeks later and he knocks on his door and he says, hey, how you doing? And he's like, I'm doing great. And he's like, have you found, you know, I gave you a Bible and you gave you a crucifix and everything's good. And, and, and you find in Jesus. All right. And he's like, certainly good to go. Great. Love the stories. Stories are great. Loving it. Cool stories. You know, snake was kind of scary, but I was all right. And he was like, and so he looks behind him and he sees the shelf and still got 10,001 gods on it now, you know, and he's like, okay, wait a minute. You have missed something here. He's like, you know, there's only one God. All the other ones are fake. There ain't no other ones. There's, he's the only one. But he's the only one. He's like, okay. And so this continues to happen. And, and, it, and eventually he's like, and eventually they just couldn't get them to understand because in Hinduism and in Eastern belief and the way that they believe is that at any moment, when you're focused on any particular mm. God at any moment, that's that it. God, that's and the, the only God. Mm. And that they're all the other ones are fake. They are just faces because come on, who really thinks that Jesus looks like Jesus does? We just mentioned a minute ago. He's mm -hmm. from the Middle East. He certainly doesn't look like some white dude with brown hair and, and sitting and blue eyes or green eyes in, in your <laughs> grandma's living room. Right. That's not real. Who always looks at you no matter where you go in her living room. Right. <laughs> exactly. So he's always so got that, his eyes right on you. So not only do we have a, have trouble communicating things like love, which which doesn't, you know, you know, like mm. intellectually make any sense. You can't explain love. You can't define love. Mm. You just can't. Not only can we not do that, but we have different points of view. And and what is right for one person, the same statement. You know, there is only one God, and his name is Jesus. Okay, it worked for him because he was like, okay, cool, I'm going to focus down on this guy. And, but that doesn't mean that Kali next week's not going to be cool. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so we, we as, as spiritual people need to understand that, that you know, these, the, for instance, with atheists, you're right, sometimes they're hurting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I, Crowley says that there are three kinds of atheists. And he, Crowley was not a, a what I would call atheist, though he would fit the third definition of mm -hmm. atheist. He said that there is the angry atheist who God didn't give him what he wanted, so he gets pissed off, says, fuck God, there ain't no God. Mm -hmm. And then there, it, so there's that kind of God, and then there are that kind of atheist. And then there's the atheist who, uh, who's an angry atheist. And there's an ignorant atheist who goes, well, I don't see him anywhere. I don't, where's this God guy at? <laughs> you know? Everybody, everybody who's, who's in that like ignorant or something like that category yeah. always has the same accent. For sure. <laughs> and when Marcus know, tells a story, it's always the same. Really I don't mean. know who he is. <laughs> He'll be able to say, I love it. But, I love it. It's... But but and then there's the enlightened atheist. The enlightened atheist, who who I would probably fall in this category, although I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an atheist. But mm -hmm. the enlightened atheist is someone who believes that God is absolutely everything from the beginning to the end of time. That it, that it is everything. That God is everything. So therefore, it isn't really a thing because it is everything mm. okay so, hmm. so chad you start i'm sorry i i wanted no, no, to no. add to your in <laughs> no that's good that's good nico you got anything before i read this thing or are you uh no i'm coasting i'm uh, digesting and then coasting all right now i gotta try to find it oh oh thanks
Well, well, while you're finding it, I have something that I want to read. So I'm yeah, gonna... already found it. Okay, then do it. do it. All right. So uh, what was that thing you said a while back, Nico? Um, maybe, I don't know, a couple of months ago, something about um, hypocrites can tell the truth every now and then too, or something like that. What did you say? <laughs> what was that thing you said? Um, you're like, damn, hypocrites. I can... think, uh, I think I was basically saying that, um, uh, let me like, run through this. Thing, man. So anyway, the, that brand of mine. It's a, it's Go a, ahead. If you can't remember, it's all right. It was something like something to that effect. Like, you know, a hypocrite can tell the truth too. You know, like basically, um, th that's the whole point of like hypocrisy is like you can say something like, Hey, you should, uh, you should never, like, I got a ba baseball coach when I was in high school. He was like, never, never under any circumstances should you backpedal unless you have to. And it's like, Okay. Huh? <laughs> that's not that's, that's a circumstance right but okay whatever but anyway like so like he could tell you like even without that qualifier like never ever under any circumstances should you backpedal and then you could watch him play and he could like backpedal once and you'd be like wait what the fuck you just you backpedaled you said never he's like yeah well you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do you know like it's it doesn't mean that the the principle doesn't still apply that you know exceptions kind of prove the rule rather than uh negate the rule right so I say that to set this up with who the author of this is, because this, uh, in his later years, it was found out that this man was uh, sort, of, sort of like what with some of the stuff we talked about with Crowley and some of the other folks. There's, there's people who still have good ideas, but they are ultimately still flawed individuals. Oh, you know, you know what I think? I think I remember it now. Oh, uh, let's go. Now Bring that it. You, you got my Bring brain. It. <laughs> it's, um, it's basically like we... We um, get on people for uh, um, them having like, uh, they have like a bad past to them. So it wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily hypocrites, but it's people who genuinely um, have like kind of a crooked history and mm -hmm. you, 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 you hear something that they say something factual. The fact mm -hmm. that they have uh, evident truth in their speech and you don't agree with them because of what they've done in their past. Right. Um, you, you, you ultimately cease it to be true you're like oh it came from hitler yeah right. fuck that. yeah exactly like, <laughs> like hitler, hitler says grass is green like well all right forget about the whole like spectrum of like how the it reflects off the green because it's not really green there and all that shit i'm just talking about like what we call green grass is fucking green, green. Right? Yeah. so anyway it's still the truth even if hitler said it <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway i say all that to say that this is something written by someone who had some 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 serious flaws it's uh his name is uh marcial maciel and i'm just saying that because like i don't want somebody to try to ask for it and look it up or something and then they i, I want to be you know full disclosure i believe in that you know completely that if you know there's some shit that somebody's gonna find out about something might as well tell them up front hey by the way if you look this dude up you're gonna find this shit out about him so this is really cool though and i want i want to read this because then I want to just, I'm not going to say anything after that. I just want to hear what you guys think about what, because this thing really hit me 12 years ago or whatever, when I read it the first time, um, it's this tiny little pamphlet. It's like, it's not very big at all. It's called time and eternity. So it says, I remember how in the evenings I used to, uh, I used to like climbing one of the hills outside of Cotija where I was born. He was in Mexico. Um, from the top, conversing with God, I would look at the, cer the cemetery down below at the foot of the hill with its decorated graves and in the plain farther on, the red roofs of the small village and, as if kneeling between them, the bell tower and the dome of the parish church. I would ask myself in the simple words of a typical 13 or 14-year-old country boy, what is the meaning of this life if sooner or later we all end up in a grave. Here lay the inhabitants of Cotija from times past. A few of them were still mourned by their widow or orphan children. The rest had fallen into oblivion. Some had lived in riches and plenty, such as the great landowners or skillful merchants, while others existed in the anguish of misery they could never overcome. Both rich and poor had lived out their existence. What use had their abundance been to the rich? What meaning was there to the life of poverty and affliction of the others? Then my thoughts would turn to the rest, the living, those bustling in the narrow streets and the main square, 
in the nearby villages and estates, the people I knew and saw every day. I also thought about the thousands and millions of people who, in other towns, in other cities, in other continents, beyond the distant hills, spent their lives in a thousand labors, each absorbed in his own concerns, untangling the incomprehensible skein from which we from which we weave the daily fabric of human existence. I thought how all of them would be on this earth for a certain number of years, 20, 40, 80, perhaps more than 100. Then, at the end, the misery of nothingness, which seems to swallow those who depart. What is left then when life runs out, if even the image of our elders dissolves in the mist of our memory? couple things that reminded me of, uh, first of all, an odd place that, that it brought me to, maybe it's because it talked about oblivion, but uh, it reminded me of some stuff by H.P. Lovecraft, which is mm. funny. Um, but the, the primary thing that it reminded me of was uh, Candide by Voltaire. And if you're not familiar with that, it's an excellent read. Um, but basically in Candide, um, there, there's this optimism versus pessimism kind of uh, views that are that are constantly at, you know pitted against each other within the, the story, and because it is just a story. And at the end of it, uh, the he, he, Candide is basically uh, put there, and he you know he's been given this optimism pessimism kind of. Uh, way of looking at life and they, they basically ask him so what what did you learn from all of this and he said I'm going to tend my garden mm. and I think that that one of the things that when when we when I look back on my life and what it makes me think about is you know I spend my wheels on a bunch of bullshit you know mm. I spend my wheels doing you know and, and and i think for good reasons i think that my spiritual endeavors have been good i think that my freedom endeavors have been good continue to be good but i i really need to focus on when i look back did i raise my kids good mm -hmm. did i did i was i a good husband mm -hmm. you know did i better the planet by you know bringing goodness and happiness and those kinds of things into the world. So that's what it made me think of. Nico? Um, I can say something along the lines of that. Um, but uh, from a different standpoint, being in the sense of when you look back on things, it is what you've done for people, but it's also on how you corrected yourself. Um, you correct yourself and, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, I've been on this little, uh, nicotine thing and like, I've been on and off and like, I saw this, uh, this quote, it was on Twitter or something. And it said, um, you either evolve or you recycle yourself <laughs> into the same old bullshit. Um, and it's like, it could go for like the father. Um, you know, I have family issues uh, where it's like, I try and fight and not be my father <laughs> mm. and how I could uh, try and like, I'm, I don't, I'm gonna wrong with my father, but you know, there's a, there's, you know, family things that, you know, it gets attached to your family's name and your father's that one. And it's all about how you can, you know, not recycle yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though this is a, this is a, a life about like how to recycle um, a lot of things and to being um, enjoy, you, you can laugh over the same shit over and over again, but it doesn't mm -hmm. take away the fact that it's still something that's necessary and needed for uh, you to cope. <laughs> um, but back to my point being uh it's don't recycle yourself don't don't recycle and allow yourself to uh being stuck in that same repetitive wavelength because you you don't see anything out of it you know um when you when i say that like you don't you don't see the end the end result of it you just got to keep pushing because your parents always taught you good morals for the most part i can't say that for everybody but um good morals are what what helps us i guess so it that's what i got 
if that makes sense. Chad, what yeah. Did you get? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, it's, uh, it's been a, uh, it's been a long time since I, I actually, had, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pull this thing out because it's been a while since I read that. But um, no, I, I was actually what what you guys both said is what what I kind of drew something from um and it's that yes you know it's it's about how we evolve and it's about what what we can answer to those questions that you were asking Marcus about what kind of a husband have I been what kind of a father have I been what have I done um you know as the custodian of this body and this time and space that I've occupied but to what Nico was saying about growth and evolution and about learning and grow and, and like improving. Um, what I drew from that was this from both of you was it's very easy. And I do this to myself a lot. I can beat myself up a lot about what I haven't done, what I haven't accomplished yet. And, you know, as you get, you know, we're, we're both in our, I'm, in, I'm 46. I'm going to be 47 in January, yeah, um, 45. Yeah. So you're oh, right behind oh. me. Yeah. So we're, we're right in midlife crisis territory. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's very easy to look back on those first 40 some odd years at all the missed opportunities, at all the mistakes, at all the failures and to beat yourself up about it and to allow that to perpetuate it going forward and to allow you to give up to a certain degree in certain aspects of your life. And so what I drew from what you two guys were saying and from, you know, from listening to, to myself read that again was we have a tremendous opportunity to spend every day going forward, spend the last half of our lives, you know, cause I'm shit. You know, I'm, I'm planning on living to be a hundred <laughs> and then some, you know, like I, we and and then the other thing is too is we've got to I was telling a friend of mine about this today we've got to start thinking in terms of like generations and beyond beyond generations um so that we are not caught up in what's next month what's next week what's n the the you know, even next year or whatever, or the next five years, these five year, 10 year plans, great as that is, I mean, shit, it's better than what most American people do where they're looking at, you know, five minutes from now, if they're lucky. Um, we need to start thinking 50, 100, 500 years from now. Right. And, and so from that standpoint, what I have failed to do up to this point, or what I have opportunities I've missed up to this point, doesn't matter. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it to where I do the best I can with what I have remaining. But more importantly, I need to instill in my children and then my grandchildren and to help them to instill in there so that we can start to build what the, the type of society, the type of life that we want to see and, and to build the, build the, the, the wealth and the ability to be philanthropic um, beyond what we are at the moment, because I can do what I can do, but I'm limited to a certain degree. Um, and they we, can't be better if they weren't. Yeah. And we, we need to make sure that we are not, a lot of times it's very easy to allow mistakes to compound themselves by focusing, by kind of navel gazing on the mistakes that we've already made. We need to allow ourselves to forgive ourselves and to move on and to learn and, and do better next time and not let the fact that we fucked up tell us that, well, we're a fuck up and we can't do this hey. right. For sure. You, you, want, you want a pat on the back? Y'all both want a pat on the back real quick? Because, um, <laughs> Go ahead. Bro. Here, I got y'all. I, <laughs> um, I will say this. Ultimately, um, both of you men who are supposedly in the midlife crisis uh, area range, because I don't know your day to days. And, you know, we, we, we uh, talk every once in a while, but at the end of the day, you guys are doing more than you actually think. Um, because this knowledge that you put me on Chad, trust to believe it's going down to a different generation that you didn't even know you had a part in. <laughs> um, Marcus, you as well, you 
in the spiritual practice and what you put me on with these books, I'm most definitely going to share it to my brothers and sisters. My parents don't like it. Oh, well, but the good thing is, is that it's open experience and you're, they're able to view things that I wasn't able to present them until I've met you guys and for you to present things into my open space. So you guys um, are doing a lot more. And it's, um, it's something that like, I have to like, re keep reminding people is like, you do too much for you to like, really think about it. Even though you feel so minute, or you feel so big, you have to understand you're still a cog. And even if you don't find yourself that right piece, somebody's gonna find that right spot for you. <laughs> it's not always you. You're not always supposed to have that vision. You're not always supposed to be able to be 2020. That's why people go blind. Because there's other remedies for that. Other people can see for you. So I appreciate both of you gentlemen and allowing you guys to see things that I haven't been able to see and passing it down to me to pass on to my brothers. Well, poor Nico makes us both cry. Right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and toss the break. Right. Yeah, I, I want to uh, real quick say thank you, Nico. And what you said in that proves why you are an integral part of uh, Aquarian Anarchy because mm. you're way wiser than you give yourself credit for. And I am glad to call you a friend. Mm. We are about to end uh, this evolution of the revolution. Um, I want to use a quote um, that isn't the quote that will be at the front of this, uh, this program that Chad has. This is something that I think that, that came to me as we were talking, and I want to end with it uh, before moving on to Anarchy After Hour, which uh, who knows where that's going to go, but it, I'm guessing it'll be uh, a good place. But this is the quote. And I'll tell you who it is. Uh, Chad will know. Others will probably know. But uh, this came to me while we were talking. And, and it's not a really long quote, but, it's, but it is a lyric. So there are, those <laughs> who th yeah. there are those who think that life has nothing left to chant. A host of holy horrors to direct our aimless dance. A planet of playthings, we dance on the strings of powers we cannot perceive. The stars aren't aligned, our goal, gods are maligned. Blame is better to give than receive. You can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from phantom fears and kindness that can kill. I will choose a path, a path that's clear. I will choose free will. There are those who think that they've been dealt a losing hand. The cards were stacked against them. They were born in a lotus hand, in lotus land, all preordained in prison in chaos, a victim of venomous fate, kicked in the face. You can't pray, play, uh, pray, pray for a place. If heaven's on earth, we ascend. And this did not have, <laughs> I didn't check it beforehand. Uh, here it is. Uh, so to continue, mm -hmm. sorry, because uh, it cut me off. Uh, you can't pray, play for a price. If heaven's earthly estate, you can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from phantom fears and kindness that can kill. I will choose a path that's clear. I will choose free will. Each of us, a cell of, of awareness, imperfect and incomplete, genetic blends with uncertain ends on a fortune hunt that's far too fleet. You can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from phantom fears and kindness that can kill. I will choose a path that's clear. I will choose free will. That is free will by the band Rush. And the point that it, that it makes is that whatever you choose, whatever path you put in front of you, whether you choose to be a Christian, a Muslim, a, a Buddhist, a pagan, an atheist, a voodoo practitioner, whatever it is that you choose, you've made a choice. Even if you choose that there is no God, that there is no no real that it's all science and that that's all that it is you still have made a choice you still have set your eyes on on finding what it is 
make a choice, have free will. You own you. You are in charge of your existence. Me, myself, I watched the, the uh, uh, oh, it's something of pie movie with the Life tiger. Of American Pie. Life of Pie. Life I watched that. American Pie. No, no, no. It's not American Pie. It's the one where the kid's on the boat. <laughs> yeah, the, the Life of Pie. Yeah. You're right. I watched Life of Pie, and at the end, um, spoiler, you find out that that may not have been all the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get to choose which one, which reality you choose. Mm -hmm. Do you choose the story with the tiger that it's an adventure and it's got challenges, but it's magical? Or do you choose the cruel, possibly mm -hmm. reality that none of that exists every time? For mm -hmm. the rest of my life, I will choose the tiger. I will mm -hmm. choose magic <laughs> and I will choose God. This has been Aquarian Anarchy, and I want to encourage you to like, share, go join our Patreon, follow us on any platform. We're everywhere. We've managed to get our yeah. tentacles off. Subscribe, kind of subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you get the notifications when we drop because sure. because it's it's going to be whenever it comes. That's when it's going to come. So unless you make sure you check it every Wednesday or whenever, then you know mm -hmm. it, it'll help to get get you that notification. For sure. Yeah, hit the bell icon, buy stuff. We have cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Listen to us on Anchor, whatever you choose to do. Um, become, an, whether or not you continue to listen to us or not, I encourage you to become free, mm -hmm. to become uh, an anarch, one who is self-ruled. That's our goal. Stay free. Peace. One for Nico. <laughs> <laughs>